Hi everyone, this is Dave from Unplugged Roadwork and, and today I'm going to talk about Japanese saws. So I have six in front of us, I'm going to go through, tell you the uses for them, maybe give you a few demonstrations um, just for anybody that's curious. Um, I'm going to try and pronounce the names correctly. So before I do that, if you like what I'm doing, give us a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and comment. Let us know if there's anything you want us to demonstrate and maybe able to do a future uh, video on some of these saws if there's anything that's unclear. So I'm going to get on with the video. First on the list is a Ryoba saw or a Ryobi, however you want to pronounce it. I'm, I'm going to butcher all of these. <laughs> so I am going to leave the correct spelling for all of these in the description. I'm also going to leave a link for this saw only. I'm not going to leave links for all the others um, simply because a lot of people won't even use a lot of these saws. You might want to experiment with them, which I have experimented with them, but this, if I could only have one saw, this would be the saw. Even, even pushing Western saws as well, I would probably take one of these over a Western saw. So I've got, I hold these in very high esteem. So I will leave a link for, for this particular saw, which is a Gaioku, if I'm pronouncing that right. Again, there'll be a link in the description. This, this is an affiliate link, uh, so the disclaimer. So I will get a little kick uh, out of it if you do purchase through the link. So as I said, this is my favorite. So for anybody that doesn't know, one side, this side is for ripping and this side is for cross cutting. So you can actually see the difference in the teeth. You know, you can see the difference a lot. So a lot of, a lot of people when they first start using one of these, they will tend to start using it like this. Um, I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong and I'm not saying it's right. My, my my personal experience and my personal preference plus what I've learned using these because I do use these day in and day out as well as western saws I believe you should be using them like that even if you look at a western saw you will use a western saw in the same bone structure so what I'm talking about here when you're using a western saw you're, you're still holding this like, like so you're not you're not holding it like that. Obviously, you couldn't hold it like that because it just would you know it just wouldn't work. But the, the point being, the body mechanics works better when you hold the saw like that than like that. So it's exactly the same with a Japanese saw. So instead of instead of holding it like this and using your your first finger to balance the saw, you're actually using your thumb. And I see a lot of people using the saws like this. I can't say it's wrong, but at the same time, I don't think it's correct. Some of the videos I've seen and some of the books I've read, yeah, photos I've seen actually actually show the, the Japanese craft people using the saw like this, you know, particularly with two hands, thumbs are always on top. So, you know, I don't, I've never seen a Japanese yeah, craftsperson use the saw like this. I'm not saying they don't, but you know, typically what I've seen is like that. And as I said, I see people using it like that. It's, it's, for me, it's just not good body mechanics. You know, as I said, I can't, I can't say it's right. I can't say it's wrong. At the end of the day, you do what you feels best for you. The thing that I like about this particular saw as well, is that there's actually different gauges of um, blade so I'm not sure the gauges of these to be honest because I have got about four different gauges and the, f and the thing I like is that you can actually change the blades so this particular blade that I've got in at the moment this is kind of just general purpose and this will do quite a lot you can actually cut joints with this to a degree and you'll get quite decent results. So this particular blade, this is less of a, uh, less of a gauge or a finer gauge if you like. Uh, 
this is sold more as a, a, a cabinet make as saw if you like or blade so the teeth are a lot finer uh, you get a better like a more a more crisp cuts um, and this is probably what I started off on another thing I like about this with this being um, a thinner gauge you can actually cut you can actually cut um, arches and you can cut circles even there is a limitation to the circles and I haven't fully explored this yet but I would probably say you would be able to get a, a two foot circle um, three foot not a problem at all I think you'd probably be pushing it to get a, anything less than two foot I do plan on making a video and um, demonstrating this in the near future um, I haven't I haven't really got any projects where I plan on making um, a round table right now but definitely in the near future I will make a make a point of, to do this because I, I do want to do it so as I said this handle will take this blade and this blade but obviously they're the same size as what else it will take <laughs> is this big guy yeah this is sold as a resource saw or a resource blade so when I first bought this I was having to resaw some oak so I was resawing the oak with with this saw here this is a western saw this isn't actually too bad of a saw um, I think it's about 4.5 teeth per inch so this was taking us about 45 minutes I believe to to resaw some oak I think the oak was 170 millimeters wide, you know, and I think I had to go somewhere maybe, uh, was it kind of 500 mil in length? So from 45 minutes, this this blade yeah took it down to 15 minutes, believe it or not. Um, obviously, when the blade was brand new, so it just kind of goes to show you the, these are really good. So the Ryoba is fixed in the centre with just one screw and it is a flathead screw. And basically it comes out like like so. So yeah you've you've got the fit in there and as as I was saying a little earlier you you can actually change these saws out with a number of fair uh, saw blades. When you use one of these, or at least when I first started using one, um, there, was, there wasn't actually a lot of information when I was searching for it. This was some time ago, it's probably a little bit better now, but I went onto a Japanese forum and everyone was saying that you should start from this end and work that way whereas traditionally um, with a western saw you would start at this end and work back towards yourself so watching videos i have seen japanese craft people do like go in between the two of them so with regards to this and with regards to what what i've my personal experience using these saws i don't think there's a right place and a wrong place to start um, there's probably going to be people that will argue this fact but I'm just going off my personal experience so what 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 I was told was to start at this end from the piece like that so the couple of guys that told us this were pretty adamant so my argument was what about if the piece was like two or three boards glued together um, you know and they they were adamant you should still cut it across that way a couple of months down the line I did actually see a Japanese craftsperson um, cutting the way that I felt you should cut from this end working your way back more like a western style which in my brain makes a lot more sense it's easier to to track the line 
I personally think, again, there's going to be people that might, uh, you know, might argue with this, but this is just my personal experience. So, you know, take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. Basically, you know, if you, if you don't like it, you know, ha have a try some some other way or, or turn the video off. You know, whatever you like. Another technique that's not really known or a lot of people haven't seen it uh, being being utilized is actually cutting in a in a vertical position so when i was doing my research when i first started uh, using japanese saws obviously i didn't have a clue how to use them basically so i was trying to dig up as much information as i could and to be honest i didn't really get a lot of information but one of the pieces of information i did get was that uh, I was on a forum and there was a guy basically back in the 80s he'd worked in somewhere in Korea I believe and he actually passed a, a site and there was some um, there was some trades people and it's what they were actually doing they were actually cutting a uh, material they were just leaning the material against the bench yeah I believe the bench that he stated th this was about waist tight obviously this is a Roman workbench I just wanted to use this to demonstrate because this is the only like white piece I've got. And basically, as what they were doing, we're pretty much just putting the weight against it. And they were cutting down like so. Uh, so far down then they were turning the board over so what I will say about this is that it works really well on wider pieces it doesn't work so well on it doesn't work so well on the likes of this this sort of thickness um, it also works really well on slabs you know like stuff for maybe for like two inches Another good thing that I like about this, and I actually I actually put a video up um, the other day on TikTok, uh, and there was a comment of a guy. Um, he was basically having a good laugh at us, basically. So maybe I hadn't explained myself uh, correctly. So as what I'd said in the in the short video, you know, this was only a sixty second video. What I said was basically gravity will aid you and he was having a good laugh about it so to, to expand on that or explain that a little bit better is what I'm talking about because you're working with gravity you probably you probably can't kind of see this on the camera but when I'm looking down this and I'm not even trying to get it straight and it is the lines pretty straight so you're using gravity to help you get a straight line is what else I said in the video is that you're not bending over and it's making it easier and is what I meant by that is that if you've got a if you've got a bad back or issues with your back and I have got issues with my back cutting a piece of wood like this can be a bit of a godsend especially if your back's playing up that day and you don't need to do something like this so you know this is actually quite good in that respect and for anybody that truck that has trouble staying on the line again gravity will age in keeping that keeping that line this this might sound a bit far-fetched you know and a couple of years ago if someone had said this to me i probably would have laughed myself but until you try it you'll you never know you're not going to know but take my word for it when you do if you do it actually use um the saw this way and ripping a piece it is a lot easier to do it like this and to keep your line and it is easier on your back and another thing to take into consideration when you are using japanese saws you're using different muscle groups because you're pulling so you're using more your bicep and you're using more your your lats and um, your shoulders and the back your trapezius muscles Whereas when you're using a western saw, it's more of a pushing motion, so you're using more of your, your tricep, your, your front deltoid, and your chest muscles. 
and obviously you're bent over so if you've got back issues like I said like my, like myself uh, you know sometimes when I've been using this it's it's actually a pleasure to swap to this so I have been for the last few months I have been going in between the two of them um, so as I said, it can be a bit of a godsend just to be able to swap around and using different muscle groups and not having to bend over all the time. So that's kind of what I meant when I did actually do that TikTok video. The next saw up is a catabar. Um, as you can see, it's it's a lot different compared to the Ryoba. And you know, most noticeably is probably that it's only got one set of teeth on, obviously just on the one side. Um, it hasn't got a spine to strengthen it up uh, although the gauge is quite you know I'm not sure what the gauge is but it's it's pretty decent gauge you know you, you don't really have to have a uh, a spine on this uh, particular so this was sold to me um, under the under the idea that it's great for breaking down sheet material and True to the description, this is absolutely great for um, bringing down sheet material. It's absolutely great for construction lumber. Um, so the shed that I'm actually studying at the moment, this saw pretty much done every single cut. Um, it is put together with um, lap joints only. Um, the the roof construction is is all lap joints. Um, obviously, you got your bird's mouth. Um, Fill that, fill that down and this saw cut everything and I cut all the, the OBS in here as well so for for what it is you know it does actually pack quite a good punch um, I, I feel it's not great on hardwood uh, more so oak because I use a lot of oak um, but you know it wasn't it wasn't particularly sold for that uh, if i remember correctly the the description was you know for breaking down sheet material so i think this is a bit of an adaption of a you know a japanese saw uh, more for like a west westernized you know um, usage basically uh, it is still a good saw and this this actually comes apart a little bit easier or a little bit i should just say so I've got a thumb screw here and it slides out. You've got the, the locking mechanism here. Yeah, this is a this is a bit of a spine if you like. Um, so when we're putting this back together. You have basically got to just line it up where, with the, the two grooves together, the groove of the blade and the groove of the spine. And basically when this goes back in, and you start tightening everything back up, and the the bolts actually goes into the to the that groove I've just shown you, and it, it stops the blade from moving around. So yeah, this is this is a pretty good um saw. Um, same again, it's made by Gayoko, if I'm pronouncing that right. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a pretty good saw. Uh, I'm not sure I would recommend it for for everyday use. Um, although, if you are using a lot of sheet material, and there might be cases where you need to to use a hand saw for whatever reason, this would be great. So, you know, if you are if you are going to rip a lot of uh, sheet material down, definitely one of the saws you want to be looking at. <clears throat> the next saw is a Dacuzzi dovetail saw. Um, probably the, the thing you'll notice first is actually it has got a, uh, a backing piece or a, or a spine if you like. Um, it goes together in the same way as the Kabata with the with a, just a thumb screw. So, this is actually really fine. I, I'm not sure the gauge of this, but it, it, as you can see, I'm, I'm barely putting no pressure on it there, and it's just bending. So this is this is for dovetailing. When I first started using this, 
I will say that my dovetailing, it, it went up a couple of notches. It's so fine. They do take a little bit of getting used to, but that's the same as all the Japanese saws. When you first start using them, you will, you will have to grin and bear it and get used and get used to using them, basically. But once you learn how to use them, you know you you are gonna you are gonna see a big difference in your woodwork. And personally, I did anyway. So pretty much, you're gonna use this in the same way. Um, as, as I was banging on about before, you're going to be using this with your, with your thumb like so. When I cut dovetails, um, when I cut the, the tail portion, I do like to cut them like this now, using the Japanese saw, basically on the on a horizontal plane rather than them being on a vertical plane, which is more traditional to um, wet Western using Western saws and such. So same again when like i was talking about before uh, with the rio the rio i saw is that when you're actually using the saw like this gravity aids you in keeping your 90 degrees now this this is providing that your your bench is on a, a pretty level surface to start with if your bench is all over you know you're not going to get a hundred percent um like uh, straight cuts so when I am cutting dovetails is what I will do so I'm starting on the corner and once I'm happy with my line once I've got my two planes I've got my plane on the top and I've got my cutting plane on on the end grain I'll just switch the two hands Obviously, this isn't clamped down. I don't know if you can see that there, but that's, you know, that's a sort of um, curve that you're going to be getting out of one of these saws. What I don't like about these saws is the fact that, that they can damage very easy. Um, you know, it is quite easy to actually break the steel. So you do have to be a little bit careful with these ones. Um, you know, you kind of just like throw them about willy nilly, like I tend to do <laughs> with some of the saws. Uh, I am a little bit careless uh, sometimes. So, if you do get one of these, I would actually highly recommend one of these if you do dovetailing uh, on a regular basis. But as I said, you have got to take care of them. Uh, you know, even if you drop them, you can damage them. Um, I have damaged a couple of teeth. This this is actually a new um, blade, so. This one's okay, but my previous one, I did actually damage a couple of teeth uh, using it for things I shouldn't have been using it for. So, I have actually used this to cut um, stub tenants. Um, it done that quite well, although I don't think it's really intended for that sort of um, work. But, you know, it is possible to use it for that. So, I highly recommend it if you're cutting dovetails. And the next saw is a uni saw. Same again as the Kabata, it has a, a very short um, back or spine. That's basically just a lock in place. It hasn't got any any sort of spine up here uh, to give it support. Um, same sort of mechan uh, mechanism to keep it locked into place. So with the uni saw, when I bought the uni saw, this was pretty cheap um, and it kind of boasted that it would cross cuts, it would rip cuts, and it would um, cut on the diagonal as well. So with all that, I thought I've got to try it. So this is probably the most recent saw I bought, and I literally bought it just to try it. You know, we've boasted all those things. So when I first bought it, 
I, I must admit I was impressed um, using it um, here and there throughout the weeks and months uh, I kind of lost interest in it it's you know it didn't it seemed to lose its sharpness and um, pretty quickly now this is a different make this is actually a uh, uh, grow I believe um, so if you actually look if you actually look at the teeth pattern you know you can see there's quite a difference in the teeth pattern here I will say this does excel on cutting on the diagonal um, it's really really good for cutting on a diagonal it'll cut you know like a 45 degree you know it's it's that it's that age old kind of thing cutting at a 45 degree do you use a rip saw or do you use a, a cross cut saw it's that age old question isn't it but this does excel on on cutting on the diagonal what i don't like about this is i've bent quite a few teeth out of place you know i've done it once i've done it twice and i started to you know be more careful with this but as careful as i was i was still bending teeth out of place i've actually snapped a couple of teeth out of place on this um it doesn't seem to keep its sharpness for very long again i, I don't know if this is just this particular um, brand but you know i haven't really tried other brands I wouldn't particularly rush out to get one of these again. If I should come across one and it's maybe the same make as the rest of the saws I've got, I possibly might because I haven't had no issues with that brand. But as I said, I'm I'm not, not in a hurry to, to get another one of these. So the next saw on the list is this guy here. Um, and this, I'm not, I know I'm not pronouncing this one right. This is a as a Becky. <laughs> anyway, this is probably one of the most peculiar looking Japanese saws, in my opinion. Anyway, um, it is similar to a Ryoba. It has um, teeth on both sides. It has a rip cut and it has a, a cross cut. So you could pretty much think of one of these as a kind of a plunge saw so when I bought this I kind of did buy this for you know doing things like housing joints and um, just plunge cuts basically you know so if you you know if you had if you had like a, a square to cut out so it basically could put a guide down and just start you know use using a guide um, and plunge down and then you finish the cut off with um you know your eye over so or whatever else as you can see this is actually curved on both sides and as what this allows you to do is to basically be able to to tilt the saw like so so I've actually just got a, a fence um, set up. This is just a scrap piece of wood. It's clamped down. Uh, and this is how you would do a housing joints. Obviously, this isn't the only way you can do a housing joint, but if you were gonna use this uh, saw or even another saw, um, this is how you would do it. So the difference with this one being, as I've said, you can actually tilt, you can actually tilt the saw like so. And you're still gonna you're still gonna be um, cutting. So if you were to use a saw, say like this, you're actually restricted. Now, all, already that's that's hitting the end of this this piece of wood. So this particular saw would be no good. To, I just couldn't use it. So this is why this one comes in really handy. When using one of these saws, one thing I don't like about it is will actually get clogged up very very quickly as you can see and that's 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 even on the rip the rip cut as well um, so when you are using one of these you've got to you have got to frequently take the saw out and clean the teeth when you're using it 
it still is good for doing things like this, so I can't really knock it, but it is sometimes it can be a bit, little bit frustrating having to keep on taking it out and, and cleaning the teeth. Another noticeable thing about this saw, I will say, this is the only saw I'll use with with my finger and thumb or my finger on top, like so. Yeah, this saw is also fixed, um, so you basically can't change the you can't change the blade out or anything. I have used this once or twice to cut veneer, um, and it actually done a pretty good job. But I've, you know, like I say, I've only used it once or twice to cut veneer. Um, would I recommend the saw? Uh, again, I think I think if you've got the spare cash and you really want the saw, then yeah, can you get away without one? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, obviously there's other there's other ways and techniques to do housing joints, so I wouldn't say this was a necessary buy. But you know, kind of if you want it, buy it sort of thing. So the last saw is is this little guy here. So this was sold to us as a pruning saw. Um, it's more for pruning. <laughs> obviously but it's kind of more for a cross cut uh, rather than a rip cut but i kind of seen it and i thought i'd take a chance um basically what i bought this for was for a, a keyhole saw pretty much you know as you can see it's got a very narrow a very narrow edge that's going to get into little holes basically um i can't remember how much this was this was this was dirt cheap yeah it's a really good buy i thought it was a really good buy um it's been it's been knocked about banged whatever it's it's been through a lot this little saw but it's it still keeps going it's kept a good um sharpness to the teeth i don't know how long i've had this i have had it quite a while um it's got a kind of a locking action yeah that you would press down um and obviously you know it keeps it in place so yeah i mean again this is not one of those saws you need to necessarily buy but for me it is a it was a good saw it's a it was a bit of a light a life saver to be honest with you yeah i was i was doing a lot of um basically cutting out cutting out squares um this was before i had the uh, 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 I can't, I can't remember how you pronounce that. The last saw I've just shown you anyway. Um, so I didn't have that saw to, to basically do the plunge cuts. So was what I was doing, I was drilling um, I was drilling holes, maybe a quarter of an inch, uh, sorry, uh, three quarters of an inch holes in using this guy to go in and, and cut the circles out. So it done a very good job of that. Um, obviously I went in, uh, I started a cut with this and I finished it with my Ryobi. Uh, right over so that's going to be it for this video if you've got any questions maybe if you want to see a little bit more um, some demonstrations uh, I would leave a comment I would like to hear what you've got to say about me you know my thoughts on Japanese uh, saws obviously I will reiterate this again this is just my personal experience I'm not saying this is how the Japanese use <laughs> use the saws um you know obviously a little bit of research i did do i did obviously find a few techniques that they do use so i'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it um let us know what you just want to see in the future as well uh, i'd really appreciate that um and everybody have a merry christmas and i'll speak to you soon